Uh, welcome to this first event of the spring series organized by Functional Fest. We are a group of Italian developers in love with functional programming. Uh, almost two years ago, I think we gathered because we wanted to organize uh, a conference to put together all the different souls and communities which gravitate around functional programming, uh, mostly in Italy, but also abroad. And, but uh, as you know, uh, nowadays organizing physical conference is kind of a no-go. So we decided to turn this into a series of online events instead. Uh, in the last year's fall, we organized four events, which you can find on our YouTube channel. Uh, and now we are organizing another series of events. Uh, just we have another one planned uh, already the 13th of April with uh, Veronica Romashkina, who will speak uh, about totality, one of the key ideas in functional programming. Uh, so if you want also to keep up, to be updated of uh, what we organize, just remember to keep in touch with us. We are at Functional Fest on Twitter. Uh, you can subscribe to our channel on YouTube and you can check out our website, which is www.functionalfest.it. Uh, this evening we are very lucky and we have uh, as a speaker Alejandro Serrano, uh, which I start to thank you uh, now, uh, is just a brief introduction. He is an author of two books, Practical Haskell and the Book of Monads. He is also a member of the GHC steering committee and is maintainer of uh, open source projects such as Mu Haskell. Uh, this evening, he uh, will, it will present a comparison between two of the most low functional languages, uh, Elixir and Haskell. And just before leaving the stage to him, I would like to remind you that if you have any question, uh, please write them in the YouTube chat and it will be uh, our uh, duty to bring the questions to, to Alejandro, uh, who will, will answer them uh, after the talk. So Alejandro, uh, please, thank you and go on with the talk. Hi, well, thanks for inviting me. Uh, yeah, so you said I'm, I'm Alejandro. Uh, I go on by Truebill on Twitter and uh, I work at 47 Degrees, which is uh, well, a consult we do consultancy and, and, and we do training sort of in, in our 47 Degrees Academy brand. Uh, yeah, I think going on with this idea of, of uh, you know, having all the different functional communities together, uh, today I would like to talk a bit about uh, Haskell, which is the language I've mostly worked on, and Elixir, which is uh, a language which I've discovered recently, and it has really been uh, a great experience to start working on it. So uh, before we start, well, uh, although I've already been introduced and, and, and mentioned all of this, just this is only so, so you can see a bit of, of my bias. So I've, I've been uh, working most of my life uh, uh, as a Haskell developer. First, I, I did a, a PhD on, on programming languages on compilers and and right now I'm just uh, well a regular developer so to say uh, and I maintain a few a few libraries I maintain uh, Moo which is uh, a library to do gRPC and GraphQL microservices in Haskell and Kind Generic which is this crazy library to do uh, generic programming in different kinds and so on. Uh, I wrote a couple of books and as I said, I've been learning Elixir since a few months. And I've, I've uh, you know, to, to, to help me learn this thing, I've created this, this page called paterner.dev, an actual website. And this is all written in, in Elixir using this, this library called uh, Phoenix Live View. And it's essentially a, a uh, a web page so you can learn and and uh, experiment a bit with pattern matching, which is, I think, one of the key ingredients of the functional programming. And it is the functional programming I like to do. And I'll, I'll be speaking actually about this uh, in a few seconds. So as I was saying, uh, there is a double bias here. Uh, I've been using 
Haskell in a decade, and I'm, I'm honestly love uh, using it. Uh, I keep learning a lot of things every day, which I don't know if it's actually good or bad. Maybe, you know, languages should be at some point boring and, and you, uh, you know, should know every, every key in your keyboard. And, and since not so much, I've been discovering Elixir and especially the OTP platform, which is this platform that comes with Elixir, uh, to, to build robust and, and, uh, scalable microservices not microservices, any kind of services. So th these languages are actually quite, quite different. So Haskell is an old language. It's not Fortran, but it's, it's quite old. So, so it first appeared in, in 1990. So it's 30 years old now. Uh, uh, for a long time, we had been using uh, Haskell 98, which was the standard uh, uh, that appeared in 99. And currently, uh, most of us use Haskell 2010, which is uh, which is the, the current standard and started in academia, but uh, and it's still very relevant there. So a lot of people who study uh, functional programming or at universities, they, they use this a lot, uh, but it, it has been slowly moving to industry in the last 10 years. And nowadays you can see uh, several consultancy companies and, and several companies just using Haskell mostly for the packet, which is also one of the things I will discuss, you know, how, how is people using Haskell and Elixir? Elixir, on the other hand, is a quite new language. It first appeared in, in 2011, uh, although it's built on top of the older airline virtual machine, which is called Beam. And it sort of started as, as uh, something which would be attractive for people coming from, from Ruby, and in particular, people who, who were using uh, Ruby on Rails to develop uh web page so you can see that that the that the phoenix framework which is the the similar library as ruby and rails in the elixir ecosystem is actually one of the uh most or best designed pieces in the ecosystem so so you can see that these two languages are actually you know uh they, they come from different places and they also appeared in different moments in time uh, but if I had to summarize uh, the talk, uh, I would say that both are great functional languages, uh, but they have really different ecosystems and, and ecosystems uh, in a very broad sense, not only what libraries you have, but also how uh, the communities behave. Uh, what are the things which are interesting for Haskell developers uh, compared to Elixir developers? Now, there are parts in which they are in full agreement they just well essentially do the same except for syntax and uh hopefully i i, I hope that uh you know if you do elixir which is the, the 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 one on the bottom you can read the haskell on top and the and the and 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 the converse because both uh have this idea of defining functions by giving what we usually call different heads, so which is uh, like repeating the name of the function and then using pattern matching to say what is the shape of the data which won into that branch. So in this case, I'm defining a function which is called greet, and then it gets to arguments, a time of day, and a person, which is going to be a structure, which includes in particular a name. Then I'm saying, well, if the first argument the time of the day is night. I want to return a sleep well, regardless of the name uh, of the person. And in any other case, I want to say good, whatever. So we can say good morning, good afternoon, good evening. And then I'm going to extract the person, uh, the name of the person, sorry, by going into the name field. And then this is a name structure. I'm going to get the first name from there. And you can say that Haskell and, and Elixir have different ways to do to, to a string concatenation and a, and a string interpolation. In particular, Haskell has no string interpolation. But, but uh, what I want to focus here is the fact that in both cases, the idea is the same. We pattern match on the arguments we get, and we extract information from the data by having this recursive matching. 
The other important idea that uh, both languages agree on is that immutability is important. We shouldn't mutate stuff. We shouldn't just go grab a pointer and change whatever this is pointing at, pointer reference, whatever you want to call it. What we should do is to get the data and then from that data, from the input data, build new values, new output data. You can see here, for example, something in which I'm using a sim this similar uh, person structure, and I wanna, uh, you know, it's, it's it's the birthday of the person. I wanna add one year to the age. You can see that uh, again, the code looks pretty similar in both cases. I'm pattern matching in, in in both cases, and then I'm using the syntax in which you create a copy of P by replacing one of the fields. In this case, I'm replacing H with the previous H plus one. And, and again, uh, showing this is just a way to show that the same ideas are underlying both languages. For example, this idea of reusing a structure, that, uh, a value which already exists and replacing some of these values. And again, we are not changing P, we are creating a new copy of P in which we change some of these values. So this is another important idea in which they both agree. <clears throat> uh, something which is also very common in both cases is using uh, pipeline, uh, even though they, they look very similar. And here with pipelines, I mean thinking of, of a function as essentially taking one piece of data and refining it over and over. In this case, for example, I want to sum the inverses and uh, and what I'm going to do is to uh, remove all of the, all which are zero because well that would that would give me a division by by zero error. Then I'm going to do the I'm going to reciprocate the number so one divided by whatever, and then I'm going to sum all the things. So you can see that in both cases this is given as a series of steps as a series of manipulation of a list. We First, take the data, filter out the things we don't want, then use map to apply a function over each element, and then finally we use sum to sum all the values. One important difference in a style, uh, more than in, in ideas, is that in Haskell, uh, most people would use what we call point-free composition. That means we use uh, the dot to compose function, and that means we sort of write them in reverse order. We uh, write first the sum, which is the last thing we apply. And you can also see that we never actually mention the name of the argument. By using this composition, this already creates the function from two functions, is what we call also uh, a combinator. And, and, and that creates a new function, so we don't really have to name the argument. In Elixir, they take a different approach most of the time. They use this uh, pipe operator, this thing which is uh, you know, a pipe symbol and a greater than, but which in this uh, font looks like a triangle. And they actually go step by step. Uh, I think in, for me, that feels more natural, even though I've been doing Haskell uh, for a long time, writing things in, in, in uh, commission style is still a bit hard sometimes. Uh, and then they they go and and mention you know the different steps we go so so to say some inverses looks reverse in one language compared to the other an important ingredient of this kind of pipelines is the fact that map or filter take functions as arguments that's where the functional uh, from functional programming languages comes from and uh let me show bit of a different styles in which we can write anonymous function. Anonymous functions or lambdas or, uh, well, abstract, uh, lambda abstraction, they have many names, but the idea is that sometimes we need a function as, as an argument. So we should be able to quickly uh, express what a function should do. For example, if we want to filter, we want to say we want to, we, give uh, as an argument the function which says which are the elements that sh we should keep, in this case, those which are not zero. So what we could do in Haskell is write it explicitly as 
bar x arrow x different than zero. That means this is a function which takes an argument x and gives you back the value x different from zero. This is close to what in uh, in Elixir we would write, for example, in my call to map. We write fn to mean that we are starting a, uh, an anonymous function and then the name of the argument and then uh, the body. And then we have to write the, the keyword n. So it gets a bit longer. In both cases, we have also uh, shorter ways to introduce uh, functions. In Haskell, for example, we can use section, which is this thing I've written one uh, divided by. That means that if you have, well, that's used when you have an operator that divided by, and then you drop one argument, then you get a function. In uh, Elixir, they also have this very concise way to write functions by using the ampersand. So that's what I'm doing in filter. And then the ampersand introduces, a, well, I don't know how to call it, but like a concise function definition. And then you can use ampersand one, ampersand two, so on, to refer to the different arguments. So here, you know, th this, the point here is that this is an important ingredient. Uh, in Haskell, sometimes maybe get two terms, like one bar. What does it mean if you don't really know? Uh, well, but maybe then if you go to Elixir, you can say, oh, I have to write fun X and end, whereas in Haskell, you just write uh, backslash. So this is the same ingredient, just different syntax. The other similar idea, even though I know what you might be thinking, uh, Elixir is a type language and Haskell is a type language. Uh, well, still the idea of the data, how does the data look is very similar in both cases. Uh, in Haskell and in Elixir, we tend to use very simple structs. We just have, uh, we just have a, few, uh, a few fields inside of them. And then uh, we also use the idea of a sum. A sum is a type which can have, which takes more than one shape. Uh, the typical case of a, of an, of a structure, of a record, uh, again, they, they have different names in different languages, uh, would be a person. A person has two fields, a name and an age. In uh, in Haskell, we declare this as data person equal then the name of uh, the name of the constructor and the type of the fields. In Elixir, we do so differently. We use def struct to define the structure, but this is an untyped language. If we want to add type information, we use uh, what we call a type spec. This thing, which start with add type, and then there we say, well, we define the type T as the structures in which name has a string and H and integer. So, so uh, the layer of typing in, in Elixir is separate. It's actually checked by a tool called uh, Dialyzer, which it's also compatible with Erlang. And, and using uh, these type specs, we can also define these sum types, these types which take more than one shape. And uh, in Haskell, this is built in. So we just give the different names of the constructor. In this case, okay, an error. Whereas in Elixir, what we do most of the time is to use a tuple. That's uh, what we write in curly braces. And then we use an atom uh, attack, so to say, uh, to declare which is the, the case as first element of the tuple. And this is something that you see over and over if you do Elixir many functions uh, which in Haskell will return uh, something like this status in Elixir are declared to return either the tag, uh, the atom okay and extra data or the atom error and information about the error. However, there is something I really miss in Elixir, which is a polymorphic type. Uh, Polymorphic type being this idea that, for example, uh, length is something which can be used on a list, regardless of the type of the list, or map takes, uh, you know, a function takes a function of type A to type B, and then a list of A, and the compiler checks that the A's actually match. Uh, 
So Elixir has some amount in these type specs. You can define a polymorphic type like result in which you say, well, uh, result is a type which has two type arguments. And then uh, it's either an error and an element of type E or an OK and an element of type R. Uh, but there is no such a notion for function specs. And as I say, uh, map is, is a, a polymorphic function in Haskell. You have uh, you have to take a function of type A to B, and then you know that the type of the elements that are input need to coincide with this type A from the function, and then you will always get something of a list of type B, which is the output type of the function you give to map. So this is check and polymorphism is this idea that the function map only needs to be declared once, but can be used in different types. But if you go and take what is the, the type, the specification of map from the documents, you see something which is, well, less well typed. You have uh, a T, which is, uh, is uh, well, uh, in this case, it's going to be a list. And then you take something which takes an element, but this element is, is uh, actually not checked and returns any, which is like whatever you want. And then you get back a list. And if you see this list has no information about the type of the elements. So this is really not so much type. Uh, if you look a bit, and this is something which really when I was starting uh, looking at Elixir, I thought that was super necessary for me. Like, how do I write the proper type of the list of, of map? Uh, I came to something like this and dialyzer, which is this type checking a uh, layer on top of a lecture seems to have something similar using capital letters. Uh, and this catches, for example, this wrong implementation. So if I'm applying, I'm trying to implement a map, but then instead of using X, uh, I'm just returning one, I will get an error because, well, I, I said that I will return a list of B's, but I'm actually returning an integer. So this is wrong. But when you call map, uh actually seems that dialyzer is sort of understanding a and b as being any which is the whatever you want type uh so this is not really catching the thing so you can call map which a function which takes characters and then pass it a list of numbers and well actually in elixir those would be the same type but uh you know uh take characters and i'm passing list and uh you know i won't get any error and to be honest, I don't completely understand fully what's going on. I just know that the error I was expecting is not being raised. So having finished where they agree and my little rant about polymorphism, let's go on to things in which Haskell and Elixir have a similar idea. They think something is important, but then the implementation turns out to be very different. So one idea is this idea of side effects. Uh, in particular, the idea that you should separate side effects. Uh, you, should, you should not use side effects freely. Instead, you should use pure function uh, as, as much as possible and separate your side effects, your writing to the database, your uh, network connections, uh, from the actual business logic, which, which should be as much as possible pure and free of side effects. So Haskell is really, really strict about this. So in Haskell, if you want to do any kind of input output to the console or, or to the file system or to the network or to a database, you even need to use a different syntax. You need to use this uh, do notation in which you, well, you use just a different subset of the language and these blocks are specially marked with a special sort of tag which is io so something which has side effects will have a type which says io at some point in the type and this is used by the type system to keep a strict separation between pure computation and side effect computation though this idea is very present in the community you read whatever book you read whatever blog post on elixir and you will see that they uh talk about this idea but the separation is software i can still have an add function which would add two numbers 
and in the middle called io.inspect, which will print something on the console. Having said so, I found that there is actually a reason of why Elixir can uh, get away with maybe a softer separation is because in Elixir you often uh, use this kind of processes, this, uh, you know, you start a lot of different processes, you don't know what they are, uh, you can think maybe of something like actors in which you get messages and then you can reply to other messages, but uh, deemed this like an asteroid. So this is actually one of uh, of the things you get by using this Elixir and OTP platform. And these processes themselves already enforce borders because you can only communicate uh, uh, between processes by message passing. And uh, it's often the case that this process, for example, uh, takes care of talking to the database and this other process takes care of something different. So they sort of enforce this idea of, of borders, of, of separating uh, different concerns with different uh, things, but they do in a different way. And I found this uh, also to be quite quite interesting and quite useful. So, so the, as I said, the idea is the same. How this enforced is quite different. And other idea, which is very present in both communities, is the idea of a domain specific language. And the idea here is that uh, instead of trying to warp the language, the, uh, instead of trying to shoehorn our domain and our terminology inside the language, what we should do is warp the language to fit our domain. Uh, so if in our domain, we're all the time talking about SQL queries, why not make SQL queries part of our language? You know, something which is a first class citizen of the code we are writing. And this, of course, uh, goes very far back uh, from the 1950s uh, with Elixir, uh, sorry, with, with Lisp and, and all these ideas. Uh, but as I said, both, both language communities uh, take a lot of time to think uh, nice domain specific languages for a wide range of problems and actually if you look many of the libraries uh target the same kind of uh domain uh in both communities you have ecto in elixir and Skeleto uh in Haskell community and both target uh, uh sql so they both embed sql in the language or phoenix which is the the uh web framework for for elixir and lucid which is uh, uh, a templating library for for haskell they both uh they both integrate a, a, a dsl a domain specific language for html template but what you would see is that they are very different in how they will do this in elixir uh many of the times what you would do is to use a macros again uh an idea which comes uh, from the very early beginning of programming, from when from from Lisp and, and the idea of having uh, programs which uh, modify or generate other programs, and this is what macros are about about generating or transforming coding code at compile time. So, for example, this is how a query looks uh, in in Ecto in in the in the de facto official SQL library for uh, for Elixir. Uh, if you read this, it looks pretty much as an actual SQL query that you would write, you know, in, in a, in a, in your, in your, uh, post SQL, uh, uh, console. So it really writes, reads up a lot, like from you in users where blah, 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 select this. And then there is a bit of, uh, Elixir there, because of course you want to embed this within Elixir. And you can see that, for example, select takes uh, an elixir uh you know takes an elixir uh build sorry an elixir structure so so this is a real a really interesting domain specific language what we see here uh if you want to know more about uh, how they do this there is this great book called metaprogramming elixir by chris mccord so i highly recommend this the other uh the other way which uh elixir community uh, embeds domain specific languages by using 
sigils. I don't really know how to pronounce this word, so I would say sigils or sigils, or I don't know. Uh, but the idea is that this is a small sub-language which is sparse at compile time. And this is used, uh, well, if you start in Elixir, you will soon uh, learn that actually regular expressions are embedded within uh, within Elixir, and they do so by using these sigils, and, and they all start with, with a tilde symbol and then a letter. So here in, in our first example with regular expression, we have the, the one, the regular expression with matches hello in a case insensitive way. That's what the I at the end says. Uh, and, and then we have a match operator that's the equal tilde to match with a thing. So uh, the specifics are not important. The important thing is that you can directly embed this small sub-language within Elixir. Uh, Phoenix Live View, which is uh, part of this Phoenix Web Framework, also has a sub-language to embed, uh, to create templates, which is using a sigil, in this case, tilde L. Then you can see here current temperature and then the value of uh, temperature uh, is uh, just interpolated there. So it, this is another small sub language, uh, which is using this this ability to to just uh, have this language parse at compile time. I mean, in Haskell, how would this thing look like? Uh, I mean, in Haskell, you can also uh, use sort of macros, which is uh, what we call template Haskell, and you also have same idea to see hills, which is what we call a, a quasi quoter, but this is not uh, used as often. What you would see in the Haskell community is, first of all, uh, this idea of using a very terse syntax, so the, the fact that in Haskell we don't have many uh, parentheses and many symbols around, and then use combinator, which are small functions which build expression. And this is how uh, <clears throat> a very similar query to what I uh, so before in Ecto looks in a skeleton, which is this library which embeds SQL in Haskell. It looks also very readable, but looks very much like SQL. So select from P, blah, 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 where, uh, where in this case has an underscore because otherwise it's, an, it's a research keyword. But you can see that uh, it also looks pretty close. Uh, so in Haskell, they, they, they've been doing this for, for actually a few decades, having this small functions which you combine to get built uh, to get larger expressions uh, a book i like if you want to know about this is uh, the fun of programming it's a book which not only talks about this it also talks about uh well about uh other interesting ideas in functional programming and it's it's actually written by a lot of people it's like uh I think 20 articles or so, and it's edited by Jeremy Gibbons and Ujo de Moor. Uh, so, so that's that's uh, actually a nice book. The other thing which is very commonly used in Haskell is, well, since we have types, why not use those types to drive what we want to do? And and I want to show here a servant, which is a library to develop web services in Haskell. And in this case, the API of our web service, so the routes, uh, the endpoints we, uh, we we respond to, are declared as a type. Uh, so this type is your API is actually a, a, a proper type, uh, maybe not a type in the same way that int or bool are types, but types in the sense that this is something taken at compile time, and they declare exactly what this root does. It it responds at user, and then if you use the method get, you will get back a list of users in JSON format. And from this, you can do a lot of things. One thing which I find very cool from the servant library is that you can just call this client function, and then you get directly a, a, a function called users, which can be used to make an HTTP request to this endpoint. So, uh, there is a bit of magic that you need in Haskell using this proxy at user API. That's a way to sort of give this, this type as an, as an argument to client. Uh, I don't want to go into the specifics. If you want to go into the specifics, there is actually a book called uh, Thing with, with Type to Sandy McGuire, which gets uh, very deep into, uh, into 
all these ideas of how we can use type to, to computation in Haskell. And uh, well, we've seen where they agree and where uh, they have a similar idea, but where are Lexer and Haskell completely at odds with each other? Well, the first thing is that well, Elixir doesn't have uh, so much types. Uh, so, so one of uh, of the things you get when you use a lot of types is this idea of higher order abstractions, and this is used to talk about similarities, for example, in containers or contexts. In Haskell, we we have this idea. Well, this this class called functor, and by the way, in Haskell, a class is what you would call an interface or a protocol or a trait in other languages, but we just use the word class in Haskell to be confusing. And, and uh, a functor is just something which you can, has a map function. So a list is something which you can use a map function, but for example, if you think of a binary tree, a binary tree can also, ha has also this ability of taking all the elements in the nodes, applying a function to each of them and create a new tree with the same shape, but with elements, you know, getting by applying the function to each element, uh, to each previous element. So all of that is what we call a functor. Uh, and it's very often, uh, you know, this, this idea, you cannot really program in Haskell without knowing it. Uh, but this idea is, you know, similarities, not about uh, how a, an integer looks similar to a bool, it goes like one layer above. It's about how a container of things looks similar or has uh, a similar set of operations to another one. And this is, as I say, very commonly used in, in Haskell. In Elixir, this is not, so to say, in the common toolbox. So uh, I, I don't know, by the way, how you would actually write this. There is a package called Witchcraft in hex.pm, which is the package manager. Uh, sorry, it's, the, it's like the uh, package repository for the Elixir community uh, in which they do this, but it's not in the common tool. So, so there, yeah, there is a package, somebody uh, implemented it, but it's not part of the standard library and, and definitely not part about how uh, people doing Elixir talk to each other. So whereas in Haskell, you just, oh, do fmap, do traverse. This is not something you would listen uh, when doing Elixir. Uh, something which actually I really like from Elixir, uh, going completely, you know, uh, changing topic just completely differently, is, is a concise way to handle errors. In, in Elixir, you have this thing called with, in which you essentially can go give a set of of uh, of instructions. In this case, map dot fetch, and then uh, have matches on the left hand side. In this case, we have OK comma with OK height. And as I said, this uh, tuplin with OK is a very common pattern in in Elixir to have something similar to some types in which you essentially say what is the constructor, what is the the the, the uh, choice we've taken with this type and then the data as extra elements. But what is interesting is that this map.fetch, which gets uh, a value in the map, so in this case we are trying to get the values width and height in our map opts, uh, can return either OK if it was found or error if it wasn't found. So this uh, width will just uh, uh, successfully complete if in both cases, we get an OK, and in that case, we will return OK uh, with times height. But at any point, we have something which does not look at what we are told to. It, it looks like an error in this case. We will just return this first error. So this is reusing the idea of pattern matching to say, well, if a match fail, the value which fails is going to be returned. And if every match succeeds, then I will do something else. I will just uh, keep going. Uh, this is actually something which has been discussed in the Haskell community because uh, it gets very weird when you have uh, you're working in a monad, uh, something like IO, and then you have function which uh, may fail or not. And in, the, in that case, you can see that actually in Haskell, they went into the route of using exceptions. Uh, 
But there is work, uh, there is a plugin called Early Do by Chris Stone, uh, which is essentially a way to handle M of either. Either is the data type in Haskell, uh, which represent this okay or error states. So, uh, you know, it seems that there is some interest there. And my neighbors, I think, are doing some construction work. In. Hopefully they, yay. Well, uh, I'll keep going by talking about the ecosystem. Thank you, neighbors. Now there is no noise. Uh, no. OK, well, <laughs> let's try. I'm going to get, you know, I'm going to put the thing. Let's, let's uh, keep talking about the ecosystem. So, uh, well, uh, isn't it great? To do everything from home uh, or your neighbors can just suddenly start uh, making holes in the wall. Anyway, so the ecosystem, there is a very, as I say, a very important difference in how the communities uh, do projects uh, comparing Elixir and Haskell. In Elixir, you often find big pieces, not that you don't find small libraries, but there are usually bigger pieces, which often come with a uh, project generator or tasks. Uh, so for example, Mix, which is the package manager build system from Elixir, already comes with a way to test. So with a, with a uh, testing framework, which is called XUnit. So it's all there. Everything you need to build your actual thing, it's there. Uh, you have frameworks like Phoenix for web services or Synth for GraphQL service. And they are more like frameworks, so you get everything on the package. Uh, Haskell, on the other hand, has a smaller libraries and there is a strong focus on uh, bring your own whatever. So I've been talking about uh, Servant, which is a library to do web services, but this does not mandate a database library. You actually should bring your own database array. It doesn't even mandate a template library to, for HTML. It's compatible with many different templating libraries, which is great because you have a lot of choice, but I've always found this very intimidating for beginners uh, because uh, of course we are not going to agree which is the best database library, template library. Uh, so even less, we're going to agree on what is the actual uh, choice for all of them. Uh, so you, you know, if you begin, what I, it, what I see is that you uh, start talk, saying, okay, when I use Servant, oh, how do I do database? Oh, you have five different choices. They are all equally good. Okay, but what, what do I choose of all of them? What if I don't care? Oh, you should care because they're, they're, they are okay, but they, they are important difference. Okay, so imagine this for your database library and your templating library and your validation library. So this is, I find very intimidating for beginners. So, so to say in this case, I like the Elixir approach a bit more. Uh, and in fact, I think this is also coming from the fact that uh, Elixir is just comes with a platform which is just awesome for services. Uh, Beam, which is the, the virtual machine coming from the from Erlang, so it's been built uh, for decades and OTP, which is a library for uh, writing services are really built for robustness and scalability. Uh, the library for the community, for example, have a central way to capture events called telemetry and, and, and there is something called live dashboard in which you can see how your Phoenix application is looking and even see the telemetry things. And this is like an awesome thing, very well designed with a proper CSS. And, and, and you can see that that you know, if you are running a service, like a long running service that has to be apt as much as possible, uh, which, you know, is what many, uh, many of us doing backend programming do, Elixir is just great. And in, I, I have to say that in this point, Haskell is very, very far away. However, Haskell is really great for anything which can be checked at compile time. And, and, and this is because of types, because types help a lot when you refactor complex data saves and also for checking for exhaustiveness to know that you haven't forgotten any case in your, in your application. Uh, 
So I find that that when you are manipulating just uh, small pieces of data or you are uh, dealing with something like like a web service, maybe this is not so clear, even though you already get some gains. But if you are dealing with something like a compiler or a complex data pipeline where, where data takes different shapes and has to be manipulated, and maybe you change the shape of one of the pieces and you really want the compiler to tell you where you have to change uh, your code elsewhere because you know the, the pieces don't don't match anymore this is a great uh a great use case for haskell and and also for in particular for checking for uh the main specific language invariants so uh if you want to create queries in sql but you also want to check that they are actual well formed uh haskell can do it for you at compile time or if you want to derive json at type safe way this can also be done so in every place in which you have a complex data which is manipulated and can can take different shapes actually is going to help you maybe not to write the first iteration but definitely when you refactor and you have to change and you say oh i forgot one piece of data here and then you, it tells you exactly where you need to change uh around your program. So this is really, really something I find uh, awesome. And and maybe in Elixir, uh, there is a way to, to handle this with Dialyzer, but but I, I, I haven't felt uh, as, you know, as, as, as safe as having a, a, as such a big safety net that I have with Haskell. So you can say, uh -huh. okay, so Haskell is great. And Elixir is great. So what if we could you know, like merge both of them, you know, why not a Husky shear or a Elixir, something like this? Well, actually, the, the question is going to be why not, you know, why not an OTP Haskell? And, and, and uh, maybe then go into some details about this, but, but Haskell is built with this idea of laziness that essentially means that code is not executed until you need it and it's only as ex executed as far as you need information uh, about it so for example if you map over a list with one million elements but then during your execution you only look at the first 10 the map is not going to be executed for the other uh, nine, uh 900 plus elements this is great because performance gets much better essentially for free, but makes IO complicated. Uh, when you want to deal with input output in Haskell, you have to be extra careful because, you know, laziness means that uh, you thought you were reading the file, but actually you haven't read it yet. And that it's gonna be read at some other point in your program when you actually need the string. And this is you know, a bit weird. I find also that the, 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 this messaging infrastructure that, that comes with Elixir is variant type. Uh, it has a variant type nature. Uh, whereas in Haskell, you really want uh, to type everything. So one idea would be maybe to, to make the protocol part of the type. And, and you see other languages in the, in the Erlang ecosystem, like Lima and Caramel, uh, trying with this idea. So I hope they, they are successful and we can get uh, a language which is type and uh, also for services as, as lecturers. Uh, I've been looking at, and there is a library called Thread Supervisor, which actually provides some of these uh, features, some of these uh, Elixir-like or Erlang-like uh, message passing uh, in a typed way. So you have here an example of, of an actor, one of these uh, servers which runs has two arguments, one which is the message, and this is this is gonna be used to create an inbox of messages and then returns a result. And, and this is an IO because it can do IO operations. So you are sort of typing the type of message that you get. Now, what happens when you don't control or these actors, they are running different machines? I'm not really sure. I guess this is not handled by the by the by this library in particular. Oh, so why not type Elixir, maybe? Okay, so the first thing is that uh, macros are very difficult to type. Remember, macros are functions which modify or generate code. And, and how do you give a type to this other than saying that it's a macro? 
So uh, this has been like a no-go for many time, but uh, in the last years, there's been uh, people working on this. There is a paper called Predictable Macros for Hendley Milner, which give us some hope that at some point we'll be able to have macros which are also typed in some, uh, in some uh, way. Uh, and then there are also ideas for more powerful type systems than that what Dialyzer does. So, so you have refinement types, which is uh, a, a way to keep information about the about the types, like the length of a list or or things like this, as part of the type. And maybe we can have Dialyzer with refinement types. There is other people working in in uh, something called gradual types, which is uh, the fact that you might have modules which are very strongly typed or you know all the types and some which are not and how do you interface between those things and maybe you know the gradual typing could be used for this kind of uh server protocols uh and there is even papers saying how we can try to build type system using macro which is also i find an interesting avenue of work so these are just ideas that, that we could use to to uh get some kind of type elixir and uh, having said so, uh, it's now a time for questions and comments. So uh, thanks for listening until now. And sorry for my neighbors making holes on the wall. That was really out of my control. Uh, you know, I'm happy to hear all the questions you may have and you, uh, and you might be uh, putting in the, in the YouTube chat. Okay, so thanks, Alejandro, and uh, very interesting talk. And um, I'd like to uh, remember to our audience that if uh, you have any questions now or uh, the following days, so you can uh, drop a message on the on the chat here. So let's wait for a couple of minutes if uh, anyone has uh, any question. I will answer the questions for free, so don't be shy. So I actually, when I see uh, comparisons uh, between languages, I, I always have one uh, uh, question that, uh, that I pose, which is uh, uh, if you have to name one key feature of Elixir, uh, what would you choose? Oh, I think in that case, it would be this, this OTP platform. So the fact that you come with these batteries included things to build services, that's what I think it's the main the main benefit of using Elixir. But at least what, what drew me to, to it. So that, that's why I what picked my interest, so to say. Okay, uh, so, okay, let's, uh, I, I do have another question. So um, in the beginning of the talk, you cite Ruby. Uh, will you give another talk about that? Uh, well, I actually have, have never done Ruby myself. So I just, I just sort of 
No, by by looking at what people have written about the lecture and and sort of where many so so it's often the case that you listen to an lecture podcast or something like this and then somebody says yes i was doing ruby and then i discovered a lecture and it, it seems that actually the creator of the language uh, joseph alim wanted to attract these people so uh i guess you know to me it explains for example the fact that being such a young language has a this super great web framework because you know you want to attract people who were doing Ruby on Rails to your community, so you have to give them the same tools that they were using. Uh, but other than that, I really have like really haven't done any Ruby other than once opening uh, you know a Ruby interpreter and and doing stuff and doing the typical thing when they say oh you can you can. Uh, change everything in Elixir, let's redefine the meta class and, and break everything, something, you know, something fun like that. Uh, that's all the Ruby I've written. Okay, nice. Um, okay, we have another question, which is, uh, uh, would you recommend Haskell developers to learn Elixir and vice versa? And uh, um, the question goes on with, uh, what benefits would they have from this learning experience. Okay, I, so well, first of all, so as I say, I've, I've, I've been doing Haskell for way longer than I've been doing Elixir. So, um, so what I so what I found is actually that that if you've done Haskell, catching about what are the Elixir things or or you know. You read some documentation and they say, oh, this thing is difficult. And then it's just the same thing as Haskell. So you've already learned this. So you can sort of concentrate on the on the juicy bits. And and uh, so you start from a very good point to learn Elixir. And, and I really think that depending on what part of the industry, people are really take are really using Elixir. So you have all this Discord or or GitHub using Elixir and they are not using Haskell. So if you wanna go into this kind of thing, so I guess the industry is gonna take these things. So you it's could be good for your career to to go into Elixir and broaden your horizons a bit. And I say it, I think it's easy to jump from one to the other. I guess if you know Elixir, uh what Haskell will give you is a bit more. I think I think you gain a lot by having uh, been introduced to this idea of very strict typing, and it's not that you will miss the strict typing or not. But I think that the fact that in Haskell everything is so strict, you know, puts your thought, put your mind into one specific line of thinking, which I think works very well with Elixir code. So it's like a way to to uh, you know to educate yourself uh, about this. And I don't know, I mean, that there are other things which I guess are not so transferable. This kind of things like, uh, I don't know, if you do Haskell, you need to learn how to deal with monads. And, and this is not something you're going to use in Elixir. And how interesting this is going to be, uh, I, I mean, I, I find interesting that, that you can then look at your Elixir code and say, oh, yes, now I see why this whole thing is called map, because there is this, this uh, you know this this uh, connection between these two things, and in Haskell, this connection is very explicit through type classes. Whereas in maybe in saying this for Elixir, but for example, this holds the same if you do JavaScript, uh, and then you want to do a bit more functional programming. Maybe trying to learn a bit of Haskell could help you understand the constants that uh, which are maybe a bit more married in JavaScript. So so that's what I what I see. Uh, yeah, and, and again, it also depends a bit on the, in, you know, so Haskell seems to be a bit more used in financial places, uh, as far as I know. So, and not so much Elixir. So again, that depends a bit of, of where you're going. And I, I don't know if there was another question. Uh, yes, there is another question actually. I, I also agree about uh, uh, keeping our minds uh, open and relaxed eyes. Uh, so the question I, I will state it a little bit, which is: uh, um, Did you uh, compare uh, the performance of the of Haskell uh, and and the Elixir? And uh, if yes, of course, uh, what what are your findings? 
No, I I I haven't compared the uh, the performance. So uh, uh, I I I guess that luckily for myself, uh, I don't work. Most of the things I work are not super performance. Uh, of course, I don't want my my program to never end or crash because I don't have memory. But this is not like something that I deal too much. Uh, I could I could imagine that that's actually something which doesn't play so well for Haskell that that when there is a memory leak in Haskell it tends to be harder to debug because of this laziness than in Elixir, which is that it has these all nice tools for telemetry and so on. Uh, but but I I I haven't compared the performance uh, between both languages in, in any kind of way. Okay. Um, we have. I think we have room for another question for our last question, uh, Leandro. If you if you agree, uh, sure. the question is: uh, Is it worth using which, uh, witchcraft, or since it does not reach the potential of Asker anyway, we might as well stay with plain Elixir? Yeah. So, I so. I just think that this is this is more like a like a. So if I were like if I just was the only were the only one in a team using this, I might be go and, and use witchcraft. But I think that this so for me the problem is that this is so apart from what the Elixir community does and talks about that you are just creating a barrier between yourself and the other. So for me it's 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 not really about whether it's it's interesting or not it's about that you are sort of a bit in your food by using this and making your code a bit less unreadable uh i do think though that it would be great if uh in elixir some of the ideas from haskell would be taken maybe not in that particular direction but i really miss the fact that if i have a binary tree i can use the map over it because for me it's just so natural now the fact that i can just take any data structure and apply a map over it regardless of the data structure that being tied to only use this on maps or dictionaries as you can do in lecture and, and, and maybe i'm i haven't found a way to do in other things but that that's what i learned until now uh it's kind of limiting so why why if i want to change you know and this is because sometimes you want to change your data structure and you would say oh this is this uh, should be a list and suddenly it's a set. And I know that my Haskell just stays the same because I'm using fmap. Uh, but if I change this in Elixir, suddenly I need to use uh, maybe some other uh, some other particular function, which is maybe it's called map, but it's in another module and I have to import it or whatever. I have to change something. Uh, so I would. this is something I would love that, that will be uh, somehow you know, not the particular flavor of type classes in Haskell, uh, but just the idea of, uh, you know, having similar functions for similar things. Okay. Um, good. So I think uh, uh, we can uh, um, thank uh, our uh, all the participants, but I, uh, a very big thank you to our speaker Alejandro. You're welcome. And uh, it's it's been a, a really a pleasure to have you uh, with us tonight. Uh, I just want to remind you uh, you all that um, uh, that uh, next month we will have another talk. Um, and uh, if you want, you can subscribe uh, either uh, uh, to our YouTube channel or to our mailing list uh, on uh, www.functionalfest.com. And uh, Thank you all again. Thank you, Alejandro, and uh, see you next time. Good evening.